Hello viewers, uh, welcome back to the course on scientific computing using MATLAB. So today we are going to start with the another topic uh, that is numerical integration. So in this case, suppose we have an integral from a to b fx dx. So this is a definite integral and I want to do the integration of this one. So if you want to do the integration of this, there are two ways we know that there are two ways to find out the integration. For example, suppose I want to find the integration of 0 to 1, maybe sin x dx or 0 to 2, maybe exponential function e x dx. So this type of integral we know that we can solve directly using the, info, using the knowledge of uh, 11th or 12th standard and then we can find out the integral value. But how the numerical integration is going to play the role is that sometimes we are unable to find out the analytically solution of this integral. For example, suppose I want to find the integral from 0 to 1 e raised to power x square dx or I want to find the solution from a to b of dx. So this is a, I know that in this case my function fx is e minus x square and this is a Gaussian function. And we know that this type of integral is used in the normal distribution whenever we deal with the uh, distribution theory. So in that case we have to find out this type of integral uh, whenever we are dealing with the normal distribution. and the integral value is find from the distribution tables. So this type of integrals we are unable to solve analytically. So in that case we can find the solution, we can solve this uh, uh, integral numerically. So this is the, the motivation that why the numerical integration is needed or in that case I can say that suppose I have a value of x that is given to me in the discrete form. So I have the value of x at suppose it is given at 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 and suppose it is 0 0.8, 0 0.9 and 1. Suppose this is the value of the x is given to me and the value of the function is given to me at this point. So suppose, so this is I call it x0, x1 and this is my xn. So in that case I have the value y0, y1, y2 and so on yn. So in this case I have the value of the function in the discrete form because this integral is in the continuous form but here the function is given to me in the discrete form. So in that case now I want to do the integration of this function. So how we can find out the integration of this function? when it is given in the discrete form then we have to come across the numerical integration. So this is the way we can find the integration numerically for such type of function. Now so I have an integral i, this is a definite integral. So and I, I want to evaluate this one, so in this case First thing is that that fx is continuous because you know I know that the function is continuous then it is integrable or second one is that if fx is discontinuous then we can split the function. 
So, discontinuous it is a piece wise discontinuous, then we can split the function and then we can integrate. For example, suppose I have a function like this one. So, this is my x axis and this is my y axis. So, y is equal to f x. So, this is my y is equal to f x. Now, suppose my function is given to me a continuous function and I want to this is my a and this is my b. So, I want to integrate this function. So, now I know that I can integrate and I will find the area under this curve. So, that is the integration I am going to have. This is the first case. Now, so what will happen in the next one? So, in, in the next case I have a x axis and y axis. Suppose my function is a piecewise continuous. So, that it has a discontinuity. So, suppose the function is like this one here, then its value is coming like this, then suppose it is this, then suppose it is this. So, in that case what you will do? This is my a suppose and this is suppose some um, I can say a 1, then this is my a 2 and then this is my a 3. So, in this case if I want to integrate this function, then I will split this into from a to a 1 and then I choose this function. So, this is my f 1 x, this is my f 2 x, this is my f 3 x and this is suppose at the last it is f 4 x. So, my function f x is has a piecewise continuous function and that is my f 1, f 2, f 3 and f 4. So, I will integrate this one f 1 x d x plus a 1 to a 2 f 2 x d x plus a 2 to a 3 f 3 x d x and plus a 4 a 3 to b f 4 x d x. So, in this case my function is continuous and of course, it is from a to b. So, it is also bounded. So, only then we can say that this function is integrable but it is a continuous in the closed interval. So, it is automatically bounded. So, maybe you can uh, skip this condition. So, maybe I can choose that this is obvious for continuous function in closed interval. So, my function is continuous in the closed interval it is always bounded and this is discontinuity also. So, in this both the cases I can say that the function is integrable. So, my function can be this way or this way it is integrable. Now, what are the conditions we have to choose for numerical integration? So, that we have to do. Now, we assume that so, for numerical integration, we assume that that the function f x possesses same sign. throughout the interval. It means same sign means if the function is positive like this one. So, I can do the numerical integration of the function for this function I can do or maybe this function is there. So, this is a positive function I can do the integration this is completely negative function I can do the integration, but, but if I have the function like this one then not possible. 
So, we cannot do the numerical integration for this type of function. We are dealing only with the function which has the same sign. So, that is our condition for numerical integration. Okay, so, now for the numerical integration, I know the process of determining the area in a plane is called quadrature in the engineering sense. So, we call it the quadrature. So, this is the way we can uh, deal with the numerical integration. Now, the question comes that how we can proceed for the numerical integration. So, the numerical integration, so I can define the methodology for numerical integration. So, this is the methodology we are going to discuss. So, let, so suppose uh, this is my function. So, suppose I have my function is this f x and it is given from a to b. So, there are two ways to solve, find out the numerical integration. First one is that you have the function f x, it is the value of the function is given to you at two points, suppose here and here, this one. So, this value and this value, then what I can do? At these two points, I can interpolate this function or approximate this function with a linear function and then I can integrate very easily or the another way is that I can split this one into the large number of sub intervals and then in each sub interval I can find the integration and then add up all together that will give you the numerical integration. So, this is the methodology. So, let my function f x is known at x equal to a at x equal to b and n minus 1 n minus 1 internal points in open interval a b. So, what I do that? So, suppose this in my I call it x 0 and this is call it x n. Then I can split this one into n sub intervals. So, I call it x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 and this is x n minus 1, this is x minus 2 and at this point this value of the function this is y 0 then I can find this one as a y 1 by substituting the value of x 1 in the function I get it y 1 this is my y 2 this is my y n and this is my y n minus 1. So, in this case what I going I have done I have subdivided I have divided the whole interval into the n number of sub intervals and then so, these points points x 0, x 1 up to x n are called nodal values. So, these are the nodal points. Now, in each of the sub interval, so suppose I have the sub interval now x 0 to x 1, this is my one of the sub interval, then x 1 to x 2 and this one. So, I can find out the solution because basically for integration I need to find this area. 
So, I can find this area here, then I can find this area, this area, then I can find this area, then I can find this area and all together I will add all this one and I will get the solution for this integration. So, basically what I am doing here that I am solving this integration f x d x from x equal to a to x equal to b. So, this is we are going to find out for this type of one. Now, now suppose, so how we are going to do, do that one? Suppose I somebody ask me that how we are going to find out uh, this interval, this integral, the Gaussian function and I want to find the integral of this one or a general function. Now, uh, what we can do is that as we know that this is my function f x. So, my f x is here is e minus x square and then I can interpolate this one I can interpolate approximate maybe I can should write approximate. So, I can approximate this function with polynomials and then I can integrate because I know that the polynomial are very easy to integrate. So, I can approximate this function with a polynomial and then we can find. So, that is the we know that we can fit a polynomial or a quadratic function for any of the function f x and then we can integrate for that one. So, that way we can do. So, for example, I have a fun from x equal to a and this is x equal to b and suppose I have a function like this one. So, in this case I can do that I can subdivide this one into uh, n sub interval. So, this is my x 0, this is my x 1, this is suppose I take x 2 and in the end this is my x n, this is suppose x n minus 1. So, what I can do is that this is my value is given to me. So, between these two values I can approximate this function by a polynomial or by a linear function like this one or I can also approximate this function by a linear function, this also by a linear function, this also by a linear function and then this area I can find I can integrate and I will get this area very easily I can find out because then it become a trapezoid and then I know that how to find the area of the trapezoid. So, this way I can find out the row, the area under this curve and that is the integration. And if you see from here, then this part if you see, so this will be the error in this because in this, this is the approximation. So, in this case we are also introducing some error, so this will be the error or somebody says that okay, instead of approximating this function with a linear function, I can approximate this with a quadratic function. So, in the quadratic function I can, uh, I can uh, for the quadratic function I need three points. So, I suppose I choose these three points and I represent this function with a quadratic function or these three values I can represent by this value. So, basically what we are doing, we are splitting the whole domain into subdomains which have three points here, then three points next, the next three points in this way and then we can approximate the function with a quadratic function. So, this is my quadratic function. So, in that case we can find out this quadratic function then I can integrate 
and if I integrate this one I will get the area under this curve and that will be the integration. Similarly, I can find the area under this curve and then in this sense there will be some error also there. So, this way we can find out. So, the given function can be approximated with large number of functions which are very easy as compared to the function we are easy to evaluate the in or we are able to find the integration. So, this way we can find out. So, we can go with the very basic rule. So, that is called the rectangular rule. And we already know that when this uh, definite integral is taught to us in plus 2 level, then we use this rectangular rule to find out the definite integral. So, what is this uh, rectangular rule? So, in the rectangular rule, the function f x is approximated by a constant value of f x at x equal to x 0 the nodal value x equal to x 1 and so on. So, in this case because this nodal value I know the value of the function. So, we can approximate the function by constant value of the function in the first interval, the second interval, the third interval and so on. So, this way we can uh, define for example, like suppose I have the function. So, this is my function is given to me this is my x is equal to a and this is my x is equal to b. Now, I will split this one. So, first thing is that I can approximate this function by value of the function here that is given to me. So, this is my y 0 and this is suppose my y I can write a and this is y b if I have the two values. Then what I can do? I can approximate this function with a state line this is. So, this is the value of the function. So, here what I am doing? I am approximating the function by the constant value given at x equal to a. So, this is a rectangle you know if you see this, this is a rectangle and I can find the area of this rectangle. So, the area of this rectangle will be length into breadth. So, from here I can say that the length will be b minus a into y. So, that is the my area. So, that we can do, but in this case if you see the error is quite large. So, to reduce the error what we can do is that instead of this I even split this one. So, again I am uh, finding splitting this one let us uh, plot again and then I am taking is equal to x a then this is x 1, x 2, x 3 and suppose x n. Now, in this case I will approximate this function from here to here in this sub interval I will represent this function with this one. Then I will represent this function by this way. The third one is I will represent the function by this, then I will represent this function by maybe next one and so on. So, I will get the rectangles for this one and then I can find the area of this rectangle because the area of the rectangle is very easy to find and then all together I will get the approximate value of the integral for the given function. So, this is the rectangular rule. So, let us uh, take the, let us uh, apply, take a monotonically uh, 
increasing or decreasing function. So, for example, suppose I take the first one, so let us take a monotonically increasing function like this one. So, suppose this function is x equal to a and this is given to me at x equal to b. So, in this case, I will split this one into the n sub interval like this one and then you can see that, so this is my x, so I will call it x 0, I will call it x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 and the last one I call it x n. So, I have a n plus 1 number of points, n plus 1 nodal values with n sub intervals and how we can find this one? Just take b minus a and divide by n for the uniform. So, that will give you the n plus 1 nodal values. So, I can say that this is uniform nodal values. The distance between two nodal values is constant in this case. So, that is a uniformity. Now, what I can do is that so, I will approximate this function with the left value. So, suppose I take this value, then this, then this, then this, this, this. So, this value I just take the left value and if I find out the integral, so I will get these areas. So, in this case I will get from x 0 to x 1 f x d x. Now, I have approximated the function by value at x 0. So, this integral become x 0 to x 1 and f x is just y 0 d x. So, it will be y 0 and this will be x 1 minus x 0. So, if it is a constant then we call it h the interval sub interval length. So, this will be b minus a by n. Okay. So, that is the value. So, I call it y not h. Then I can find out the integral in the next sub interval f x d x and in that case I am choosing by y 1. So, if you see from here this will be x 1 to x 2 y 1 d x. So, this will be y 1 h and same way we can go. So, in the end if you see this is n minus 1 to x n f x d x. So, this will become y n minus 1 into h. So, if I want to find the integral from a to b of this function then we can add together. So, this will be equal to y 0 h y 1 h up to y i minus 1 h. I can take the common h. So, this will be y 0 y 1 up to y i minus 1. So, this is what I am doing is, so this is called the composite. because we are dividing the domain and then adding together. So, this is the composite formula. So, if I find out the integration, so this is the value of the integration. And I know that in this case the, because the error is there, so this is the error we are introduced at each of the sub interval. So, this is the error we are adding. So, from here I can say that from A to B, f x d x. So, this is the area under this curve and this is the area we are getting. So, this area definitely will be lesser than this one. So, I can say that this area is greater than y 0 y 1 up to y n minus 1. So, that is there. 
So, definitely and the di difference between the, these two values will be the error we have introduced here. Similarly, I can define the monotonically decreasing function. So, in the decreasing function, this is my x equal to a, this is my x equal to b, then again I split this one into the n sub intervals. So, now what I am going to do? Again, this function I approximate with this value. So, this is the value I am going to get. Next value I am going to get is this one, next is this one, next is this one and so on. So, in this case also we are approximating the function with this rectangle. Now, this function is approximated by this value. Now, if I want to find the integration from x 0 that is a, a to x 1 f x d x. So, this value will be the area under this rectangle. So, this is my x 0 to x 1 into y 0 d x. So, this is y 0 into h. So, this is my y 0 value. Then next is y 1. So, in this case also the composite value or the composite value will be again y 0 plus y 1 plus y 2 and y n minus 1 into h. But here now this area is definitely lesser than the areas we are taking for this rectangle. So, this is the, the extra area we are adding for this one. So, from here I can say that from a to b f x d x, this is the integration we are getting. So, it definitely will be less than y 0, y 1 up to y i minus 1 h. So, this is the way we can define the rectangular ways to find out the numerical integration for a monotonically increasing or decreasing function. So, this is just a preliminary work we can do for or a basic work we can do for the numerical integration for a given function. So, uh, we will stop here today. So, today we have started with the uh, basic concept of numerical integration and we have discussed that how we can approximate the given function with the rectangular values and in the next lecture we will continue with this one. Uh, thanks for watching, uh, thanks very much. Mm -hmm.